Hello everyone, this is Melanie and today I'm going to finally do a video about the top five tips for dealing with streaky paints. We all deal with this nightmare and you know I always talk about how transparent paints are Satan's colors <laughs> and you know they can be a true pain in the butt but streaky paints can be just as bad and I have an entire different set of rules for dealing with streaky paints. So we're going to talk about those things today. We're just going to jump right in and let's start talking about what to do when you get a set of paints that look like what we're about to talk about. I've recently done a video on the Paintcraftology Colorful Fish set I had purchased back in the spring of 2021. I got it and the paints were horrendous. And just recently I reached back out to them. They sent me a new kit and the paints were way, way superior. So they had apparently gotten a really bad batch of this particular kit. And I'm gonna show you that 20 of those paints were transparent or horribly streaky. So thank goodness they replaced that kit. But what do you do? if you get a kit from a company and they don't replace it. What if you just have a couple of paints that are just bad or you have to come up with a solution on your own? So let's talk about what are you gonna do in that situation. So out of the 20 that were a real pain, we're only gonna focus on the ones that were streaky paints. And I'm not gonna talk about every single one of them, but a few of them you may have to approach a little differently because some of them are lighter than the others and darker paints that are streaky might have to be dealt with a little differently than a lighter paint that is streaky. But some of these tips are gonna work no matter if the color is a light color or a dark color. But we'll deal with that when we get to it. The ones we're gonna focus on primarily are going to be these bright like fuchsia pinks and the darker ones like this blue, this royal blue and maybe even this green, this number 10, because these are ones that we're always going to find that are gonna be just so difficult. Browns and deep colors like that can be really difficult. So the way you're gonna approach dark colors no matter what color it is, whether it's brown or a deep purple or whatever, they're gonna be the same methods. So I'm not gonna sit here and go through every color of the rainbow and tell you how to deal with it. You're gonna use these five tips regardless, but I am gonna talk about different values of colors just so you'll have an idea of how to approach them if they are lighter or darker, okay? So tip number one. For the love of gesso put clear gesso on your canvases. But really, you guys, for the love of gesso and all that is holy, <laughs> there are several reasons why I use clear gesso on my canvases. A lot of people will say, oh, I just don't do it. I hate that texture. I just, I hate it. Y'all may not sound like that. A lot of people will be like, oh, I hate the texture. Oh, it ruins my brushes. Well, if you guys would follow my instructions about how to take care of your brushes, you wouldn't have that problem, but that's another video for another day. So gesso will make all the difference in the world. Let me get my two canvases ready and we're gonna delve into the difference between with and without gesso and streaky paints. We're going to test the difference in streaking on exactly the same opening because these two canvases are the same company, the same opening, <laughs> you're gonna use the same paint, everything's going to be exactly the same except this is an ungessoed version of it, this is a gessoed version. When I say gessoed, I mean this is a clear gesso and I always use Liquitex clear gesso. I will tell you there are other clear gessos on the market. I've only tried the Liquitex clear gesso because that's just what I started with and because I have a jug of it. I haven't tried other companies versions of it yet so there are some that don't have as much tooth but the tooth is what helps the paint stay in place and what prevents the streaking and that is why I use the one that has the rough texture. So let's do our test here on number eight. This one gonna be a bug. Well, 
we know the opacity is going to be horrible because this is a very transparent paint, right? Let's see how it streaky it is on an ungessoed canvas. Boy, I just feel like I'm working, working, working here. Now, the reason I'm using this round brush, I re originally started out with a flat brush, but I switched because I wanted to make a point here in a minute. You notice how I'm going back and forth over the same place and it's just moving the paint like, but it's not giving me better coverage. Super frustrating. People who paint for the very first time and they're dealing with a kit that is like this, I don't know why they ever paint again. Like, <laughs> I'd be super frustrated. So that is not a very pretty finished piece there. Now let's go over to our gessoed part and I'm gonna move this camera here for the close-up. So tip number one is gessoed canvas is gonna give us a better tooth, but tip number two is using the right brush is gonna give us a better coverage without streaking. So what I'm going to do here is use both of those tips together and get the best overall coverage because I'm using less strokes on a surface that has more tooth, which is gonna hold the paint better. Let's see if we get better results and less streaking. Now it's not gonna improve our opacity, but that is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the streaking. You also can see how fast this covers, taking less strokes. I'm overlapping less. So you can see what I'm saying about less streaking. And I, I think once I compare the two, it's a whole lot more noticeable. Now you see when you turn the flat brush on its side, it becomes a point and then you can use it in a little different type of way. Now I got, I'm not really close up so it's hard for me visually to see what I'm doing, but if I got a little too much here, I can always smooth it out. So you can see that's a much smoother coverage, which is what we're trying to achieve. Even if we, like I said, still have very transparent coverage, we have a smoother finish. So what that means is if I have to go over this with a second layer, at least my first layer is smooth. So my second layer will be smooth. And then I have two layers of a smooth color. So let's take a look at this a little closer. The difference is we have thinness here, thicker layer here, thinness here, thicker paint here, thin, thick, thinness. And you can see that it's just not an even layer. And over here was just an, a smooth, even layer. So that is the purpose. Streaking can be different things. It doesn't mean there's gonna be lines in it. It means that there's gonna be an uneven surface. So if it's uneven and it's not smooth, when we go back with a second layer, our second layer is not gonna be even and smooth. So tip one is just as important as tip two because they work together to make the coverage perfectly smooth. So let's attempt to put a second layer over this, but we're gonna go back to using the round brush. Every brush has its place, and this one is not necessarily the best one for this particular opening. But I wanna see if, you know, multiple layers, if it makes a difference.
You see how my brush kind of goes through that and it makes little streaks right through the middle of that, those little clumps of paint. But that's how you can see like tracks. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. But that's what creates streaks in a lot of paintings. So we'll take another look closely when it's dry, but I wanna move to this one and see what kind of coverage we're gonna get and whether it looks smooth or not. Let me use the same flat brush. I hope you can see how perfect and smooth that application is. Um, and that just like, that just proves my point. Now again, I can still see number eight because this is a transparent paint and we have a whole other way of dealing with transparent paints. But the coverage is not streaky. So we've talked about using gesso to prime the canvas and we've talked about using the right type of brush and we said use a flat brush right in a larger area but we need to talk about what size of flat brush so i have different sizes of flat brushes right i have my little baby sized 10 slash zero flat brush which is amazing for little tiny openings like this one but is it ideal for this 21 well i think we should do a test and find out so if you're not using the right size for the opening you are going to be creating streaking so you've already got a paint that has issues and let's say you have a paint that doesn't have issues with streaking but you're finding that your paint is streaking switch out your brush it could just be the brush you're using maybe you need to switch to a flat brush maybe you need to switch to a larger brush than what you're using so let's ask yourself every one of these five tips ask yourself is my surface primed Yes. Am I using the right brush for the opening? Yes. Is it the right size for the opening? And if you can answer yes to those, then it maybe it's the paint. And then you're going to go on to the next step. But for right now, let's talk about which is the right brush for the opening. I've got these three different size flat brushes, and I think I'm going to grab even a little bit larger one if I can find one in my stash. And we're going to even try that one to compare to what happens when you're using the wrong size brush in an opening. So I don't even use these brushes. I never use anything really larger than this one, but I haven't done a painting that has openings this large and so long that I haven't really had the need for them. But I went ahead and pulled a big one out just kind of show you guys. I wouldn't be using this one, but I just want to show you the difference. So I'm going to try it just to prove a point in a minute. But for now, we're gonna do the test on our unprimed surface. I'm gonna use the two smaller brushes. And over here, we're going to use the larger and this brush so that we can talk about what really works and what really doesn't. So going in, with number 21, which is this royal blue that can be a real problem in almost every single paint set. I feel like it was a good one to test. Let's do it with this teeny weeny brush. Now, obviously, nobody is really going to jump into this big opening with this tiny brush, but you know, just to prove a point, <laughs> Melanie B is gonna do it. It would take me a hundred years probably to sit here and fill up this whole cell, but you know, 
So the reason you're going to get streaking is because you're going to make so many strokes, right? You're going to be going back and forth over your paint to the point where you're making stroke marks over back and forth, back and forth, and you're creating texture. You're creating movement in the paint. And in any other painting, you know, you would probably want that texture, any other type of painting, in oil paints, in watercolor, in normal acrylic painting projects, you know, you would welcome the texture. But in a paint by number, you're trying to achieve smoothness and, you know, this beautiful surface. Well, you aren't gonna get it by stroking and restroking and going back and forth over your own brush marks to smooth out a surface. Now, can you imagine, I'm not even gonna keep going. This is like monotony to me. Do you know how long it would take me to paint this opening with this tiny brush? So not only is it creating a, an ugly surface, it is going to waste my time. And you guys, we as painters, as hobbyists, we don't wanna waste the valuable time that we have for our hobby. We want to enjoy it. And we may only get 30 minutes a day. And do we wanna sit here and spend 20 of it painting this one cell because we're using the wrong brush and we're having to restroke and repaint the same little section over and over and over and over and try to remove stroke marks. I don't know about you, but I don't want to. And this is my favorite brush, but it's not for that opening. So let's test it with a little bit larger brush. I'm gonna go ahead and this one will work a lot better, even though it may not be as nice as the larger paint brushes. I will go ahead and just paint. I won't, I'll fast forward this part. Okay, like I had to stop. I can't even like. <laughs> so it, before I, I even move on to the other section over here and do it the right way, this you can see from the angle that the camera is right now with the lighting, how uneven and horrible. I don't even want to finish this section because this is a canvas. I will be painting and I'm going to have to repair this <laughs> at some point. So I will be putting clear gesso on this canvas and painting this piece. Yes, I will go over the top of this painted section and it's such a minor you know, amount, I'm not worried about it. But um, yeah, I don't wanna continue to paint this because it is, it is paining me to look at it. The fact that the divots, I mean, for the love of gesso and all that is holy, do you see these little holes right here? This is like torture to me. So yeah, I don't even wanna continue. That is that is stealing my joy right now. So I'm gonna move over here and we're going to get a little closer and use some bigger brushes and let's see what we find. So let's see what we find using the prime surface with the proper type of brush and the proper size of brush with a streaky paint. Let's start with this horrible brush. <laughs> Like this is a craft brush, you guys, just a flat craft brush. I don't want to do it. Um, this, this is actually like torture for me to use. I'm going to just use it for a small amount of time. Uh, I don't even think the bristles are straight. <sighs> but I don't, I don't even want to use it. I don't even want to use it. Like I don't even, this is like torture. Okay. Oh, this is not, I don't want to use it. Oh, the, yeah, the bristles aren't straight. No, I can't. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna use it for a little bit. <sighs> I need to get me, okay, I'm done. Wait, there's a little bit of paint on there. I don't wanna waste the paint. 
Ugh. All right, so you see how beautiful and smooth it is, right? I will get, I probably will design, honestly, a custom set of flat brushes that are larger. Right now my custom set is a mini set of brushes for the detail areas and I will come out with ones that are probably larger because I feel like there's a good need for that. But let's go to this one just because I feel comfortable with this one. That one shows you how smooth the flat brush is in this opening, the right size flat brush and a gessoed surface. So again, we're using all of the tips together to get the best and most perfect coverage, less streaking, and let's fill this in. I'm already feeling more joy. Okay, so can we just take a minute right now and look at the absolutely beautiful coverage of this blue? Now, let me get the original and show you how this streaked. This is opaque, you guys. I can't see the number at all. So something that originally looked like it was going to be translucent and streaky is no longer either one of those. So that makes me happy. I didn't even want to stop painting it. So I'm not even, I don't even think I need to say a thing about this. I, yeah, there are no words. Okay. So <laughs> sometimes pictures are worth a thousand words, right? A video is worth a million because I'm a visual person and I assume you are as well and that is why you're sitting here watching this video right now because you need to see visually why the things that I tell you work. This is why I say the things that I say. Now I also want you to notice the intensity of these two blues. And if I can, after I'm done with this video, I'm going to try to get a photo of the difference of these two blues next to each other with the same lighting without this one being, you know, light bouncing off of it because this one looks like it is two shades darker than this one with one coat. All right, now what do you do if you have a streaky transparent paint. Now we've talked about this before in the three shades of gray video and I'm going to show you a sneak peek of something that no one has seen before. And when I say sneak peek, I mean very quickly. This is the prototype to the new Melanie B's three shades of gray kit. Yes, I showed it to you quickly because it is in production. I'm hoping to introduce it and launch it mid-November. 
and it should have been out sooner than that but I made some changes and you know etc etc so hopefully you will have that in your hands before Christmas we've talked about how priming with shades of gray can prevent transparent translucent paints from having the number show through but they can also prevent streaking so in the card that comes with and I'm not gonna let you read it but the card that comes with the kit there are personalities for each shade of gray and I won't go into all the details but Mr. Gray this is dark gray he has a personality of his own as the others do but he has zero tolerance for streaking and he will slap some underpaints on some streaky paints so that is how you know which gray paint to use under a streaker okay so that is why each of the gray paints has a personality it will help you to remember which one does which thing so once you get your kit you will understand that a little better so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the number 10 paint that is in this kit and because it is more of a medium tone than a dark tone streaky paint i'm going to go ahead and use it anyway and we're going to test it with the medium gray paint she can also work with streaky paints in the case where there's a medium tone she is more of a neutral party she can play nice with streaky paint so sometimes you might need her instead of mr dark gray over here but mrs gray is someone who you know doesn't mind helping out when she needs to so let's pull them both and what we're going to do is we're going to prime the number 10. now what i want to do first is use my gessoed canvas now you will learn more about the grays and their neighborhood and how to use them properly once you receive the grays kit now it is called Melanie B's Three Shades of Grey Survival Kit for a reason. It will help you survive your paint by numbers. <laughs> but what I'm going to do first is I've got two cells with the number 10 right here. We're going to test one with medium gray, one with dark gray. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of the steps together by using a primed canvas. I am going in with the flat brush in the largest size and I'm going to go ahead if it is a transparent streaky paint and I'm going to go ahead and prime this number 10 with a gray okay So keep in mind, if you put down a shade of gray and you don't gesso your canvas and you have a streaky shade of gray, what is your color going to look like over the top? It's going to be streaky too. So another thing I want to point out while these are drying, if you use a gray that is not opaque, it doesn't matter because the color that goes over the top is going to cover and that is not going to show. I actually went through about, I don't gosh, I don't even know how many different shades of gray to finalize what I needed for my three shades of gray. And I was 
really concerned about transparency and opacity and everything. And once I finished with all of my swatching and all my tests, I realized it didn't matter in the end because even if I put a transparent paint over the top, it never seemed to make a difference in the overall finish. I still only had to put one layer of transparent paint over the gray and I still couldn't see the number. So I was like super duper excited. But anyway, so before people start emailing me and saying, when is the three shades of gray coming? Is the three shades of gray here yet and whatever? Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> it happens already. So either one of the websites, you will see a pop up when you go to the homepage that will tell you when it is available. So trust me, there will be a lot of announcements when that is finally available. I will put it on my Patreon group. They will know first. In fact, they will be available to pre-order it before anyone else. And then it will be announced on the group and then it will be um, announced on YouTube. So, and it'll also of course be announced on the website. Let's go in with our number 10 and then we'll do the dark gray. I feel like the medium gray is going to be the one that really needs to be the base layer because this, like I said, is a medium toned, a medium valued green. But if it was a darker green, you would go with the darker gray. But we, I will show you the difference between the two because I can always paint over this, I'm not worried. do this green over this which the medium looks fabulous so this is probably going to darken up the green more than it needs to be but we're going to do it anyway because you know how I roll So you can see that both of those look incredible. At least I hope you can see that. Well, you guys, I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it has answered all of your questions about streaky paints. And if you guys cannot find the solution by using the four tips together, that I have given you in this video, then my final tip for you is to throw the paints in the trash because I have nothing else for you. <laughs> I really hope that you guys have found this very beneficial and very informative and I hope you will continue to follow my videos and my channel. Um, you guys be sure to go join me on the Facebook group and on Patreon and my other social media and I will see you back soon. Thanks as always for watching.